What's up guys? So today is just going to be a little bit of a casual vlog of my trip out to Colorado. Some of you who follow the channel and my Instagram know that I went to visit Brian Borstein out in Colorado. He's obviously been on the podcast many times. And so this is just going to be a little bit of detail on that. On the trip, we got to meet up with Casm Hansen and Alberto Nunez. We did a podcast together that is not released yet. And so we're just going to go through some of that here. I literally just included this picture to remind myself to buy these later. And he also made us some fantastic protein pancakes that I have to get the recipe for. Obviously, we've got to finish up with a flex at the top of the mountain here. And then we're going to get into some of the sessions that we did. Uh, we actually did a couple of different exercises while we were there, a couple of new exercises that I have not tried before, some that were focusing on the lengthened portion of the movement, others that were focused on the shortened portion of the movement. And I'll let Brian kind of explain that here. All right, Brian, what do we got today? All right, so first we're doing a short overload one arm pull down, then we're going to do short overload chest press, then we're going to go lengthen one arm pull down where the big guy is over there, and we're going to do lengthened chest press with dumbbells. So four circuit, or four movement circuit, two failure on probably the last two rounds, partials on the short movement in the final round. Yes sir. we got Mr. 3DMJ back here. So like I said, we got to meet up with Alberto Nunez. Obviously, this was a very cool thing for me as I've seen a lot of his content and 3DMJ's content since 2011. We got Brian Borstein there. We got Kasim Hansen, uh, big guy back there, Mike. I think he's about 275 there. And here's some 150-pound dumbbells he's repping out. And actually, I got to give props to Cass as well. He was also repping out the 150-pound dumbbells, I think actually for more reps than Mike did. So Cass is very strong and we got to really see what the n1 gym had to offer here we got brian getting put into position for a lengthened movement here and some of these exercises really did kind of trip me up because the strength curve is just different than what you would expect um, so there were some very unique machines here we got to try out you guys can play around with it but i like the the leg that's down i like to straighten it so i can let that hip sag for like the stretch yeah because if you bend it you just you're tempted to want to push into the floor and then you'll keep looking at the pelvis on the side. In this, you can see that Brian is being instructed to almost sit off of the bench a little bit, really kind of angle the body. This was one where I consistently found that I was pronating my arm there. And so uh, I had to be instructed a few times by Cass to have it either neutral or even almost supinated to some extent. And I'll let him kind of explain a little bit more so, about this one here. So this guy, me main thing here is this is something you don't usually get so yeah you can just you can use this for stability which means that okay i can kind of like turn away a little bit here and get a little bit more just overall range of motion than if i were to have a bar and i was like you know it's just gonna stop me whatever right so with this i can now turn and get like the exact path of elevation that i want right and then i can have a nice ball stabilized here versus trying to do it with two arm and now basically my erectors are having to stabilize me. I've gone a lot more towards one arm rowing and pulling. So this one basically, the cable is the same weight the whole time. Yeah. But you're, you get weaker in the short. The strength curve. Right. Sure. Okay, so, so just so, your so, natural so, short. Right. Okay. So, so basically, whenever the resistance is consistent, the resistance profile of the exercise is based on you, right. not the machine. Right, right. So, so that other machine is specifically a length and overload machine. Yeah. So, yeah, so that one is basically... There's three pins. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So that one is extremely heavy in the length end because we're much stronger there than and they get shorter. But sure. if it was only a small difference, it would still feel heavier in the short. Yeah, yeah. Because of how much weaker we are in the short. Right, okay, cool. It's, all right, new uh, recycle. What are we starting with specifically? Oh, okay, what up, y'all? Um, so we're gonna start with short overload for upper pec and thoracic lat, so upper yeah. lat. This is our lengthened overload chest right here. So uh, the lengthened overload chest is what Dave just showed, but we're gonna start with particular press arounds, so one arm press arounds for the short position. Never done those. Cool, awesome. Then we're gonna do two arm rows for the upper back and thoracic lat region. That's gonna be shortish overload. And then we go into lengthened. So we're gonna do this machine again, 
Oh, but okay. instead of doing it one arm for iliac lat, we have the setting lower and we're going to lean back. So we're going to get a more horizontal angle. Okay. So we're going to go thoracic lat and then we have lengthened uh, for chest with the prime okay. incline press. Cool. So here we have the fly press. It was a little bit of an awkward movement for me doing this the first time. Obviously we have Brian doing it here. Cass had instructed us to bend the elbows more than we were doing. And you can see here he tells Brian to do it almost more of like an uppercut motion, kind of up and across. Uh, but again, it should almost be stopped by the musculature there. So. It, to me, again, a little bit awkward. I've actually done this for the last few weeks and it is feeling more natural. I can feel it in my pecs, but it's not like the next day I got any crazy pec soreness. Uh, again, I'm sure I'm not doing it perfectly, but it's an interesting thing to kind of throw into the mix. You know, I think you can get into a debate about how much it should be about exercises like this versus maybe some of the quote unquote heavy slag iron and the progression over time to heavier weights. I think both have a place in the routine. It just kind of depends on what you're looking for and why each one is in the routine. But I did think it was an interesting thing to kind of add into the mix for this workout and a few since then. Oh. Alberto got eight here, and you can see in a minute I'm going to challenge him and see if I could beat that number. I actually thought I was going to the first few reps, but uh, we'll see what happens. What do I get if I beat Alberto? What did Alberto get? I don't know. How many did he get? Eight, maybe? I think I got eight. All right. Let's see. I know this man's a presser. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's working around some things. Okay. Nice. All right. That's further along than I thought it would. Okay. There it is. Oh, come on. <laughs> How many was that? So as we could see, I could not best Alberto there, so I had to out-angle him a little bit in this photo. But that was the bulk of what we did there. You know, we went through eight different exercises, so two different circuits of four. Uh, it was a fun workout. It was really good to meet up with these guys and podcast later. I think that podcast will probably come out whenever uh, Cass decides to release it on his channel, and then we can share it here. Um, the end of this video is probably actually the longest portion and you know you guys can decide if you want to stick around for it or not. I will basically explain in the video what my theory is but we run a calf experiment at the end here and uh, rather than go through all the details and everything and repeat what I'm saying in the video I'll let you guys just watch it uh, but I'm not really editing much with that I'm just going to let it play and you guys can decide if it's worth it for you to watch it but essentially I just wanted to run a little experiment regarding full range of motion calves whether or not people ever truly do full sets with full range of motion calves and if that is even necessary. So I'll let the rest of that video play, uh, but this was pretty much the bulk of the content here. So let me know if you guys enjoy any vlog style content with this channel. I can put out more. Um, and also let me know how you enjoy any of the audio only videos. I've had a few in the past where I just have audio and I don't include much of myself in the video. Sometimes it's a little bit easier to do that. So let me know guys, subscribe to the channel for more like this. Like the video and I will see you next time. All right, so I talked before about my theory with calf raises because ever since college, I'd see people doing four plates on like a seated calf raise and whatnot. And, and just like, am I just incredibly weak or, or how is that happening? Obviously there's a momentum component, um, but I've discussed before about how I think that most people, like even like Jeff Alberts, 500 pounds on like a Smith calf raise. I'm like, is he that much stronger? And my guess is that it's not a true full range of motion. So what I want to see is like, what is your maximum range of motion to go up on both legs do that? And then just on one leg, see how many reps we can get. Cause I have, I have notorious that we calves. I want to see like what the difference there would be. So we can just all each do one. So both legs, because that would be, you'd be strongest, right? So basically you go up as high as you possibly can. Okay, so you're like right there as high as you can. Okay, and then and then you can come down. So now again, make sure you're getting that equally high range of motion. And how many reps can you do?
Okay, that's still there. There's some a little higher than others. So that's a little lower. Can you feel that it's lower, Brian? No? Okay. <laughs> okay. So, I love it. Now, did that feel like to you, like if you were doing a one-legged cat raise, would you say, oh, that was to failure? Or would you use like, I have 10, 20 left in me? I wouldn't say 10 to 20, but I would say I'd call that like two to three RIR. Okay. Because it's, you know, back in high school when I was obviously much lighter, I used to do full range of motion, one leg cab raise, it's like sets of 15. And, and now like six, and I'm, I'm obviously way heavier, but I'm, I'm amazed at how much I've lost there. I think as I go heavier, I just don't have access to that shortening bit, even they agree. Right, well, that, that's the thing. And I'm not even saying that is the right way to do it, right? Because it, yeah. So, okay, so if you were to do both, well, do both legs first. All the way up, as high as, as high as you possibly can. Right. Up, up, up. Right. And so I'll just call that then. So this, I'm going for right there. Yeah. So there's. Okay. Yeah. So then, Brian, you can still hold it. And if you guys just want to hold it. Yeah, go down to one leg. So go to one leg. And then how many reps can you go get into that same? And you still want to get a full stretch and everything. Okay. And then you can go. Yeah, I mean, he's not even there. If you're being honest with the, where the original mark was. Right. So let, let's just keep going with, with close to like at least this. So how many, how close he's getting to that? Yeah, he's there. I mean, he's where. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's about an inch below the actual line. Okay. Yeah. Nope. No. No. It's, yeah, it's it. So Cass, I don't know if you heard what I was saying, but my, cause you know, for the longest time, the stubborn Cass, everybody's like, oh, you got, you know what it is. You got to have full range of motion and get the contraction. And my theory is like almost nobody is doing true full range of motion cab raises. And I'm not saying they should, right? All this stuff on length and news and everything. But just, I, I just see a lot of bullshit with people saying, no, you gotta get this full. I'm just so much weaker and that shortened. Yeah, like, I, I think everybody is, right? Is gonna, and that's gonna be where you fail first. Roll up all the way first with two feet. So there's just my top. Yep. So about right there. Okay. And then you said you're doing your right leg. Yep. Excellent. And so then it's just how many Repetitions, one. Don't pull up with those arms, Kaz. He's pulling up with his arms. <laughs> that one didn't get that. No, that one didn't get that. Oh, you're not, you're not, you're not getting that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's go. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I would say that was a it's okay. Yeah, nine on that one with the stick. Nine, okay. two less with the stick. So would you get eleven? You got twelve, twelve, nine, and then you were like you got six or seven. My eight. Got it. I'm a lot digging us. All right, that's. Fix. So her does. All right. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So, all right. So basically, if I didn't, if you didn't hear this already, my theory is basically nobody does full, full range uh, calf raises. Now, you said you do a ton on what exercise? Just like a straight legged like calf raise. So like a leg press calf raise. So, but I mean, and also, but you're what, 260 right now? Mm -hmm. So doing a single calf raise with 260 for that many reps is significant, but, um, yeah, I just, I don't think it necessarily matters. I don't know if you have any bodily content. It's relative to body weight. So, I mean, so I'm probably doing, you know, four or five times body weight calf races. Right, right, right. So, yeah. So, and I do calves as like to rest between other things. So yeah. I inadvertently train more calves than probably most people do. Mm -hmm. Just because it's my way of killing time between like hack squats or. Well, and do you even care to get, again, based on the lighter stuff? No, no, no. To, to get the full contraction because these days I don't even like I wouldn't say that that test matters that much because I think if you're getting the first half anyway that's that's the big thing what do you think um I mean I'm not ready to throw out that there's no benefit in the short you know, like like I will do we'll say length and bias but a lot of times what I'll do is I'll do either integrated partial still I'm still including the short I'll do partials at the end yeah I don't do that much of just lengthened only like partials only on the calf 
Um, but I usually will always at least take sets to where I like I'm, you know, fairly moving it. Yeah. Some of that's just practically too, though, because some machines, like if you just, if you're just hanging out the bottom too much, like it's almost like as you push up, you kind of get to like reset your foot a little bit. Yeah. If you just hang, you're just slowly sliding off. Super. So that's also just a practical reason that sometimes just doing just the length of partials doesn't necessarily work because I just always constantly feel like my foot's got, yeah, yeah, fall off the machine. Cool, cool.